A lot of times in studio portrait photography, the photographer will use kind of uh, an abstract background uh, that adds a little bit of texture and interest, but it doesn't really distract from the subject. However, sometimes you can add backgrounds using Photoshop. I just want to go over the basics of adding a background in Photoshop and some of the example backgrounds that you can create using layering in Photoshop. So go ahead and open up any kind of portrait photo that has a simple background that's delineated from the subject. If you need to add a little bit of contrast or just the curves, we can do that. I'm going to work on a duplicated layer, so I'll press Control or Command J on the PC or Mac. And then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. I'm just going to pull this down just a little bit, just so that it's a little bit darker in the foreground here. Okay, so what we want to do is cut out the subject from the background. So depending on your photo, you might have to use some manual selection techniques if there's not really a clearly delineated difference between the subject and the background. In this one, there is a difference for the most part. So we can actually use the quick selection tool and I'm just going to click and drag around the subject like so. And that does a pretty good job. Oh, it went too far. Let me try again. So I'm going to deselect. I'm actually going to select the subject instead. And you can adjust uh, some of the settings up at the top with the quick selection tool. We want sample all layers unchecked for this example, I mean, unless you have, a, especially if you have a bunch of other layers. But uh, if you have add to, that's going to add to the selection. If you have subtract from, it's going to subtract from it. Or you can just hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, and that will subtract from. Like in in this area here, we need to subtract from. Press the left bracket on the keyboard to resize, and we need to subtract from this area, and we need to. Alt or Option click and just subtract that area and then hold shift and add to an area and if you find you know it's not really working well you can also use say the polygonal lasso tool I have a straight line here I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna use that for that edge there double click to bring it back around and this area here I'm gonna Shift click. So now I added that to it. And I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to Alt. Click in there. That should be good. I'm going to Control my or Command minus. Looks pretty good so far. Need this area here subtracted from the area. So I'm going to do something like that. Okay, so we see right here we need to add that. I can actually just add that again with the quick selection tool. It looks pretty good. I'm just looking over. Make sure you don't have any areas in here that need to be selected. Like for example, if I had this here like that, I'm going to make sure we have that all selected like so. All right. So that looks pretty good. We can actually adjust this though with a refine edge. If you go to select then refine edge and do smart radius, refine radius tool, I'm just going to paint around the edge just a little bit with this hair, make it a little bit more delineated. Bump up the radius just a little bit. I got 1.2, but it depends on your photo. And I'm going to click OK. And so that looks pretty good. Oh, notice right here, we need to add that to it. I missed that. Okay. All right, much better. So once you have an area selected, we can also, if you want to feather the edge, uh, you can go to Select, Modify, Feather, just so it's a softer edge. Uh, I don't like to feather too much, but I'm just going to do one pixel. Then I'm going to press Control J. What that does is press the I icon of the other two layers. Now we have them on its own layer. All right. So the next step is to add a background. If you add a layer by clicking the create new layer icon on the bottom layers panel. In your basic layer, you can set your foreground color to some color 
uh, kind of a subtle color. Set your background to an analogous color that would be next to it on the color wheel or a complementary color just depending on what kind of look you're going for. So if you do analogous, then you can choose the gradient tool and the first selection here is foreground to background and you can click and drag. That's your kind of your basic added background. Let's create another one though. Hit the icon of that. Let's create a new layer. Uh, let's try another one. So you can also go to filter. These are some ideas. Filter, render, clouds. And that's kind of like that abstract background you see in some portrait studios. But you can customize it a lot more. If you think it's too strong or too detailed, you can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur it a little bit, maybe not too much. Create a new layer. Go to filter, render, clouds again. And you can adjust the layer blending mode of that one so it interacts with the, the one below it. Maybe makes it more lightened. Overlay. You can also rotate it if you want to have different effects, if you think it looks better. You can make it larger so you have a larger photo just hit enter overlay it on top of the other one so there's with or without it so it adds a little bit more texture to it and if you think these are too strong you can bring the opacity down of one or both of them like so you can also have them interact with this gradient so for example this one here let's make this say soft light and make this one soft light as well and then you got a nice mixture of that abstract textured background with the gradient so that's adding a textured background that you've seen a lot of studio portrait photography just after the fact it's just rendering clouds you can also try rendering fibers doing those kind of things in there you can also go to let me do create a new layer here so we're working on a new layer press alt backspace or option delete on the Mac alt back backspace on the PC so you fill it with the foreground color on this new layer and then go to filter render lighting effects and wait for this to come up and you can you know add some kind of lighting effect so you can adjust the intensity how large the hotspot is all, right, all these different settings on it in the properties panel while we have that open up and I just hit enter and that applies it obviously now we can't see through to the bottom so what you can do and then change the opacity of the top layer maybe adjust the you can do normal uh, some of these aren't going to work too well with because you know the lighting ones uh, the ones that lighten it a little bit you're not going to see much and then if you darken it you can do multiply but really if you just do normal and bring the opacity down then it does add a little bit of lighting to that background so there's without the lighting effect with the lighting effect so that's adding a abstract background to a photo after the fact in Photoshop